Hey everyone, Scott Volker here. Today what I wanted to do is actually go over a post that came in on our forum and it was actually uh, from one of our NPB students that's a pretty active member in our forum and I wanted to basically show you this because she did a couple of things that I want to point out and I think you can learn from. And the first thing is, number one, she was just checking out her lighting. As you can see right here, it says checking to see if lighting is okay. That was the heading. And a bunch of people uh, responded. Um, obviously, Joe Marshall, our lighting uh, coach, uh, came in and told her what she was doing right and what she was doing wrong. And I don't think there was really much wrong in this one. There was actually, everything was looking pretty good. And she only used one light. Uh, on the front as the main and she also used a reflector and I also believe she might have used a strip light in the back just to give it a little bit of a hint of light in the back but I honestly think the the uh, strip light didn't necessarily have to be there to get this shot and to get it um, exposed as well as it is but um, we're not going to go into the lighting uh, tutorial today but what I did want to point out is this number one this right here this pose Okay. Now, most people think that the children have to be looking at the camera like they are over here. And I just want to point that out. It doesn't have to be that way. So many people think that you have to do that and that kind of holds you up and it doesn't allow you to get images like this. This right here, a mother, a father will love for years because they're interacting with each other, they're siblings, they're having fun, okay? So that's the first thing that I wanted to point out. Second thing I did want to mention once again, seeing that this thread came in under lighting, is you don't have to have the best lighting out there to get shots like this. Again, if you shot this right here and it wasn't with the best lighting but you got this shot, parents are going to still love it. So don't get all hung up with the techie stuff, all right? And the other thing I wanted to point out was she put together a nice little collage here. Really simple stuff. She just opened three images, she left a little bit of black over here, and then she added two images to create a nice little collage for the parents. And I think that was a great idea. Um, you might not be able to see it as well in my camera view. Now you can. You can see it up here. What I wanted to do also is show you something else that she did. Here's the collage again, by the way. The other thing that she did was she used one of our digital backgrounds and props and she created that. Now that's really what I want to talk about because look and see how she took this pose right here, she cut out the image and then she inserted it into a digital background. And this is not a real bird, it was a real bird, but it's not a real bird next to them. Um, it's not a real uh, bird bath in front of them. Okay, this is all digital uh, props and digital backgrounds. Okay, this is the power of this. And that's what I wanted to show you. So this is how the image originated and then she created this. So now what I wanna do real quick, and I'm gonna do this with a low res image, I'm gonna show you how easy this is. And I wanna show you how simple this can be for anyone. Um, really, this simple. And uh, you can create a shot like that instantly all right so let me just take this shot and again this is low res this is at a hundred percent so this is made for the web right now it was scaled down for the web so what I'm gonna do is show you that we can even do this with a web image now we wouldn't want to sell it as a web image but I want to just show you that we can create an image relatively quickly um, with just about anything okay I'm gonna pull up the background again too this is the background and the prop that I'm gonna be using and you can see over here um, we have the vignette right here, which is turned on and off. We have the bird, we have the bird bath, um, and then we have the background, okay? So let me just scoot that out of the way for a minute, and then let's work on this. Now, if you see, if I pull this in, you can see it's all kind of jagged and stuff, and that's because this isn't a high-res image. You would be working on a high-res image. My point is, it's going to be even easier on a high-res image because you're going to have more detail, all right? So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to select the Magic Wand tool, and I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna keep the tolerance at 10. Now, let me just say, she shot this on a black background, okay? And that's great for cutting out images too. The only thing is, is it's gonna give you a little bit of darkness on the edges, and that's okay. In this shot, it's gonna work. But for the most part, if you were shooting different colored dresses maybe, you might wanna go on white. In this case, I think she did the right thing by going on black because she had white dresses and we didn't want that to be a hard cutout. So here we go. I'm just gonna click. You can see I already did a pretty good selection. And then to, to 
keep kind of extending this cutout, I just hit the shift key and click again. Okay, and just go into the areas that you want to cut out. Now down here, this, is, uh, this isn't even going to matter um, down in here, but I'm going to click it anyway just to get rid of that. Okay, so we're pretty good. And if I zoom in on that, you can see I'm pretty close to the edge. So I'm going to be okay with that right now. So let me just, oops, zoom back for you. And then uh, go up here and go layer, new, via copy. Okay, now look what happened over here. Let me just point this out. Right here, you can see it cut them out, but it left the background and it didn't keep them. So the reason for that, let me step back. Okay, I'm just going edit and step back on that is because we didn't invert it, okay, or inverse it. So here we go. So we're going to hit select, okay, inverse, and then now we're going to go to layer new via copy, okay, and then just turn off the background layer, and now we have that. Now look, we did over here, we left this, uh, this little bit of a black strip, no big deal. Click it there, and if you want, you can just hit delete, and away it goes, okay, but we're not even going to need that, so I'm not even going to worry about that. Okay, so now that we have that image, let's see how it looks when we apply it or merge it with the digital background. So, real easy. This is open, right? This is open, so we have two images open. We're going to take the girls and we're going to drag them in here, okay? Obviously, they're not where we, where we want them to be. Bring them down a little bit. And then to actually make them larger, you're just going to hit your shift key and bring them up to where you think they look where they are proportioned properly. I think that looks pretty good there. I could probably even make them a little bit bigger. Then hit the pointer tool, select OK. Now if you don't see these uh, this bounding box on here, right here, just check this where it says show bounding box. That's all. Okay. And now again, this is a web image, so this quality isn't nowhere near what your quality will be like. Okay. But now you can see there's maybe a little bit of a black edge in here and everything. Real quick, simple way to fix that is go back to the magical magic wand tool and click in here. You know, click out here again if you want. Again, holding the shift key, hold in here, here. Okay, looks pretty good. And then what we're gonna do is go to select. We're gonna go to modify, and we're gonna go to contract. Okay, and it's set to well, let's go to one and say okay. Now what that did is it brought it out further. Okay, so I'm glad that happened. That's not what I wanted to do. I want to go select. I want to go modify. I want to go expand. Okay, and we'll go one pixel. And then it just moved it in. It just basically brought it closer to them. And then what I can do is go select feather. And then we'll do a one pixel feather. And then layer new. And we'll go cut. And see over here, we're going to minus this now and then we just cut out, cut that out and we softened it a little bit that looks pretty good okay so again that's how simple it is now we just created a portrait that looks like it was on a different background but we originally shot it on the black background right we turn that back on that was the original and that's what we created so pretty cool stuff this is something that took literally minutes to do and you could probably do it in seconds if you uh, weren't talking through it like I was. But I wanted to point out that you don't have to have poses that the child's looking at the camera all the time. And that goes for anybody if you're doing senior photography. It doesn't have to be where the subject's looking at the camera. This is a, a great shot. Uh, whenever we do this shot, parents love it and um, they just love having that interaction with their children. So again, um, real simple stuff to do. And I want to thank, thank Carol for allowing us to do this. And I want to also say congratulations on a great job because uh, this right here, I think you did a great job on your lighting. I think you did a great job on your posing. And I think you did an, a great job on giving the parents two options, black background, digital cutout background with a prop and a bird. Okay. So again, great job. I just wanted to share this with people because I think that you can learn from this, number one, and number two, see the power of digital backgrounds and props. And uh, that's it. That's going to wrap up this video. Hope you got a lot out of it, and I'll talk to you later.